let's talk about the Bohr model of the atom. There's a lot of different ways of looking at the atom. His way, I mean, there's a lot of other things based on this, but the stuff you need for the IB is this, that the electrons in the hydrogen atom, uh, they have stable orbits. So what that meant is, see, um, if you did the math before this atom, it would say that as they were just orbiting around, they should give off radiation, therefore their orbits should sort of degrade. His thing said, no, 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 they can be stable, they can be happy where they are, no problem there. Next thing, um, this whole thing we've been talking about before, that the electrons can go up or down in orbit um, based on these quantized numbers of, of energy. So this could be this E equals HF. And of course they emit radiation when they go down. This is this whole idea about these uh, energy levels when they go up and they go down and they emit a photon. Right? That we know. Now the other thing he said was this, the angular momentum of the electrons, that's quantized in integer amounts of H over 2 pi. So what does this mean? This is actually an equation on your data booklet. I haven't seen them really use it much on exams, but I mean, hey, it's in the syllabus, they've added it, so uh, I would be surprised if this shows up, at least in an easy way to explain it. I think what would help to know is this, when you talk about angular momentum, it's a little bit cheap because you know you don't do so, so much of it in uh, IP physics, but this is the angular momentum right here, this first part. This is the angular momentum. And if you're going to say that the angular momentum is quantized in integer amounts of h over 2 pi, what that means is it only comes in numbers of this. So you've got h over 2 pi, and notice what n is. n is just an integer. That's why it's integer amounts. So for example, let's just say you have uh, the angular momentum is equal to 1 times h over 2 pi. That's allowed. Or it could be 2 times h over 2 pi, or 3, or so on. So n is just these integers, positive uh, 1 and higher. So we talk about these different things. This is the mass of the electron. That is measured in kilograms. You can look it up. What is it, 9.11, I think, times 10 to the minus 31 kilograms, something like that. Speed of the electron will be in meters per second. We have radius of the orbit. That should be in meters, I would guess. Uh, this is just an integer number, so they have no units, and h is just a constant. That's the one at 6.63 times 10 to the minus 34. Again, look it up. So this, I don't know what really they could ask you other than just, you know, fill in N and M and maybe what's V or what's R or what's M or what's N. They won't ask you for H because H is known. But other than that, they could ask you one of these variables by uh, and uh, not give you the other ones. So here we have orbital energy. This is another thing uh, that came from the Bohr model of the atom. He was looking at this especially, this is for hydrogen, by the way. This is, this is for hydrogen. So for the simplest atom, the nice simple one, he said that En, where n is just a subscript, it's just a, it's an integer. Again, it could be one, two, three, four. He just said the energy of um, the uh, nth orbit, so the energy of this electron in this orbit, will be given by minus 13.6 divided by n squared. So for example, if you have n equals one, then it's just minus 13.6 over n. And by the way, uh, so in this over one. Or if it's over 2, then it's 13.6 over 2 to the power of 2, which is 4. So you have 13.6 over 4. That's the next one, and so on. So En is the energy of the nth orbit, but it's important it's in electron volts. And maybe it's a good idea to just do this question here, so just to have a little bit of practice. This is an exam kind of question. So we have an electron in a hydrogen atom. It's excited up to the third orbital radius number. That means now it's at N equals 3. If that makes any sense? Uh, then it undergoes a transition down to the ground state. What does that mean? Ground state is n equals 1. Not 0, but 1. So now it goes from n equals 3 to n equals 1. What's the wavelength of that photon? Well, what we can do is we can find out what's E3. In other words, what's the energy of the third orbit? Let's say it's minus 13.6 over 3 squared. Well, that's minus 13.6 over 9. Let me figure that out. So we have 13.6 over 9. So that gives me um, negative 1.51 electron volts. Okay, great. Let's do E1. What's that give me? Well, that's negative 13.6 again. Now we have to have like before. We divide that by 1 squared. And 1 squared is just 1, so that means it just gives me a value of negative 13.6 EV. So now we have E3 and E1. And I hope it makes sense. We have to do delta E. So that's just going to be these two subtracted. Right? So uh, we just need to know the difference, right? So 13.6 minus 1.51. I'm just doing the absolute value here. We end up with what? 12.09 electron volts. 
Um, so I think that's actually pretty uh, interesting here. We've got this uh, energy now in electron volts. Now, what do we do with this? If we want this wavelength, um, what can we do? We need a wavelength here. Do you remember what we can do for EE? This is, this is the energy we're looking at in electron volts. We could first convert it to joules if we wanted to. So we can get rid of the electron volts. So that means we have 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 joules for every electron volt. So let me try that. So I'll multiply my answer by 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19. Whoops. What did I do? Times. Uh, yep. Yeah, times 1.6. So my calculator is doing something really strange. There we go. So now I have my delta E in joules is 1.9 times 10 to the minus nine, uh, 18 joules. Why do I need that number? Well, because I want the wavelength. Remember, E equals HF. And if you remember your equations, um, remember C equals F lambda. That's your wave equation. If you want to get F by itself, you can say F equals C over lambda. So that means everywhere I see an F, I can write it with HC over lambda. And if I want to solve for lambda, Fine, lambda equals, um, this would be hc divided by e. If I just move the lambda over and I move the hc, I move the e down. All right, so let's put in the numbers. 6.63 times 10 to the minus 34 times c, which is 3 times 10 to the 8. All that divided by the energy in joules, which is 1.9 times 10 to the minus 18. Let's try this out. I'm going to save that answer. So 6.63 times 10 to the minus 34. Whoops. Something wacky happened on my screen there. There we go. Times 3 times 10 to the 8. All that divided by my answer that I just got. Right? So 1.9 times 10 to the minus 18. If I do this, I end up with a wavelength of uh, one point let's say oh actually times 10 to the minus 7 meters um what that means this is 100 nanometers you could say so this right here is something that uh is probably not something we're gonna measure with our eye at least we certainly won't see this this is way beyond uh, ultra ultraviolet for the eye so we won't notice this but it's about 100 uh, nanometers or 1.0 times 10 to the minus 7. so something like this that should help